Hey there, welcome to How to Fix It Workshop. My name is Josh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this toy box out of one sheet of 4x8 MDF. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this project out of a full sheet, 4 feet by 8 feet uh, piece of MDF. And what I had um, the hardware store do is cut this cut this 4 by 8 sheet into two halves. So I have cut it at 55 inches and that way I could transport it a lot easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to my plans and you can find the plans on our website uh, howtofixitworkshop.com and I'm going to start cutting um, the bigger of the two pieces down into 18 inch sections. Okay, so the pieces that I just cut were for the bottom, front, and back. And now I'm going to take this piece, uh, the remaining piece of that 4 by 8 sheet of MDF that's about 41 inches long, and I'm going to be cutting it into an 18 foot, oh, I'm sorry, 18 inch section and a 19 inch section. But first, I'm going to cut off um, some of this, some of the scrap on the ends, and the scrap that's going to be left from this piece and from the other piece that was used to cut the bottom, front, and back will be used to put legs on the sides. Okay, now with all my pieces cut to length, I'm gonna trim down the sides. I need the sides and the back, I'm sorry, the front and the back, I need them to be 33 inches, so I need to cut off. Um, so I need to cut off a little over an inch. Okay, something I probably should have done earlier, but I didn't think about it, and I messed up on the cut for the bottom piece. Luckily, uh, I just have to cut off a little bit more because I. I cut it too long, I need to go a little shorter. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label all of my pieces. So I have the front and the back, and then I just wrote out bottom on here. So I'm gonna, so now that I got all five pieces cut, I'm just gonna label them as I start to trim them down to their final dimensions. Okay, so I just messed up a cut on one of the sides. So even though I had it marked, I had side, um, I sh now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have sketched out all of the parts on the full sheet of four by eight MDF. But as I set up my table saw to make this cut, the two sides have to be 16 and a half inches wide. Somehow I had my measurement wrong on my saw and, and I was you know, two inches or so into the cut before I realized I was gonna be cutting right through my, my words. So that didn't help out a whole lot. Hopefully I can salvage this piece by just filling it in because I don't have any other pieces that I can uh, use. Um, so we'll just have to make it work. I'm gonna be filling, I'm gonna be painting this whole thing anyway. Because MDF is a really good material to paint. And um, hopefully nobody will notice. Okay, so ongoing issues with these sides. So not only did I cut the one like two inches up and had the wrong measurement, I also cut them both at the wrong width. They should have been 18 inches wide, just like the bottom. But for some reason, whenever I did my sketch, I thought that they needed to be 16 and a half. So I'll correct that. I did actually find an old piece. Found this old piece of MDF that's three quarters of an inch. So it's got a lot of graffiti on it because, um, well, the kids had it for a long time. It used to be a desktop. And it's been out in the shop for a long time. It's got a lot of cobwebs on it, but it's in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna cut it down to the size that I need. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere now. I got all the sides cut to the proper width. Second time was a charm. Um, 
The bottom and the two sides need to be 18 inches. So I got a full box built here. I got it uh, held together just, just kind of a dry fit with some, with some clamps. What I'm planning to do is on this bottom piece here, I'm gonna put pocket holes from the bottom that are gonna attach to the sides all the way around. And then I'm gonna attach the sides um, nothing fancy, just going straight through uh, the you know one in the front and the back into the sides with screws, and then um, these are all. But all everything is going to be covered up. So, with the exception of the bottom where you'll see the pocket screws, the sides are going to have some legs that are going to go down. So we're going to cover up all these screws that are going to be on the sides holding the front and the back uh, to the side pieces. So, onto pocket holes. So I'm going to put these every six inches. Okay, now that I got the out of the pieces cut and I've got the pocket holes and what I'm going to do is stand the bottom up on its side because I want to attach this, I want to attach the side piece to the bottom, so I have to do it while it's standing up. So I'm just going to put a bead of glue down. And then I'm going to temporarily tack it in place. those pieces all tacked together I'm just gonna put a clamp on this across the ends here to tighten everything up while the glue dries. Alright this next step here is purely optional but what I'm gonna do is on the front and the sides of the toy box I'm gonna add um, kind of a, a shiplap look by cutting some lines into the into the MDF. Uh, I did two test methods here, one with my router with like a V-shaped uh, router jig and then another one with um, small with a small circular saw. I didn't really like the way that the circular saw looked. It just it just doesn't really look very clean and very straight. But the the router, uh, although it's going to be messier, uh, it's going to cut a nice straight line. So I spaced some cut lines about four inches apart and then I spaced the guide line for my, for my router to follow this straight edge. And um, yeah, so I'm going to cut those out real quick. And now the next thing I'm going to do is use my jigsaw to cut out about an inch and a quarter spacing up on the top of the front of the toy box so it's a little spot where little fingers can get in and lift the lid. Okay, with the glue dried and the clamps removed, now it's time to add our screws through the pocket holes. And earlier I mentioned that I thought I had my setting a little too deep. It's something I should have noticed whenever I was drilling my holes because my drill bit was actually poking out as I drilled the pocket holes. So when I tried to use this pocket hole screws that I had, which are inch and a quarter, I would have drilled through uh, all the sides and the front and back. So what I had to do is 
find a bunch of, uh, I guess, three quarter inch wood screws from my uh, miscellaneous screws, and I'm just gonna stick these into the pocket holes. They're gonna have plenty of strength to hold the bottoms, bottom front sides. Okay, now with the sides in place and screwed down, I'm going to add the I'm going to add the front of the box and make sure that lines up okay. And same thing, same thing I did with the sides is add a bead of glue all the way around. And then I'm going to tack it down with some nails. My sides are wanting to pull in just a little bit, so I have to pull them out. And I'm just going to spin it around and do the same thing to the back. Okay, now that I have my front and back attached, it's time to put the screws into the pocket holes. I did go ahead and add the two clamps just to pull everything together. Okay, while my glue's drying for the bottom attached to the back and the front, I'm just gonna use some of these one inch screws to attach through the front and back and into the sides all the way around. Now these are, I'm not worried about the appearance of these screws because they're gonna be, they're gonna end up being covered up by our legs, uh, but I do wanna be careful to countersink the screws so that they don't interfere with the legs whenever we go to attach those. All right, with the front and the back attached to the sides with the screws and glue and nail, I am going to cut the same matching uh, score lines or like the fake lines for shiplap into the sides. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the back because it's probably going to be up against a wall, but I'm gonna do the two sides and it probably something I should have done at. Uh, before assembly, but I think I can uh, still still get in here and, and make a line that'll match to to the front. And what I did is I just cut a piece of scrap and I got the the factory edge of the MDF and I made myself a little note to have the guide side out and I measured the same uh, two inches in between the uh, the the cut lines or away from the cut lines so that I could just line my guide stick up with my lines. And I'm going to use my clamp and I got my, I've got the toy box resting on a couple of scrap pieces of MDF at the bottom. So if I get under there I can clamp the, clamp the guide stick to the box. Okay, so during the last few minutes, I was building the legs out of some of the scrap wood that we had from cutting down all the other pieces that make the box. And for the front legs, what I'm going to do is I cut, uh, I want it to be basically a three inch leg, and I created uh, 
45 degree angle on the two sides. So these are going to go on the front legs. So the back legs, I've got a three inch piece and then a piece that's about uh, two and a quarter inches that will go on the back of the box. The three inch side will go on the side of the box so there won't be any seams shown there either. And then I built this little, uh, just out of some scrap wood, I just built this little two inch platform because I want these legs to bring the box two inches up off of the floor. And in order to assemble them to the box and get a nice uh, even fit all the way around, I thought this would be my best option because I don't quite trust the, uh, the sides of my box. I see a little bit of unevenness when it comes to the top, so uh, I thought this would be the best way to try to get it to be a nice solid base all the way around. There won't be any rocking once uh, if, the, if the toy box were to ever be on like a hardwood surface. All right, so here's a close-up of those front legs. So what I'm going to do is bring the two pieces together so that there's no seam of covering up all those screws. Rather than attach the legs in pieces to the toy box, I'm going to put the two pieces of the leg together with glue and nails and then attach as one piece instead of two pieces. I'm just afraid that the uh, things won't quite line up properly. All right, so here it is all finished. So I didn't record the painting or adding any of the hardware, but what I have here is the base is, base is white with the legs and then the top is, is all black. I added these hinges on top, just two small black hinges that kind of blend in. And then I got a couple handles on each side. These are like cabinet handles. And then inside the top has these dual hinges which I thought were going to be some sort of like soft closing hinge, but it turns out they're more like just a permanent stay open hinge that keeps the keeps the lid from falling back down onto a uh, onto like a little kid's hands. But I thought they were going to be like a soft close, but they're just uh, more of like a a stay in place type of hinge. So once it gets to a certain point, it just it goes all the way, oops goes all the way down like a regular. Regular top. So I'm going to try to put together a set of plans that are going to be found on our website at howtofixitworkshop.com and if you have any questions please feel free to leave them below and let me know what you think of this build.